Okay, shalom everyone. Uh, praise the Lord for such a strategic times like this. And praise God for people, for you, dear friends, brothers and sisters. Uh, because eventually prayer, what makes the bis- biggest difference in our life and our ministry in the future of our countries, in the future of Israel. So praise God. We are so blessed uh, people like you, uh, Christians who know God, who know how to pray. And you stand with Israel. I see it is a biblical uh, fulfillment of prophecies because many prophets repeatedly said nations will come and nations will proclaim glory of God and nations will give their efforts. And that's what you do in the spirit. You removing the stones, you preparing the way, you raising banner of prayer uh, for the nations to pray for the nation of Israel. So uh, I really see it uh, as a biblical fulfillment of the prophecies. And it's amazing that you've been sensitive enough to receive this call from God and to carry what's on the heart of Abba, of uh, Father, uh, to carry his love for his people and for all nations, all people, and for his beloved uh, in chosen people of Israel. So praise God. Uh, and I pray blessing over you. I pray as that, that as you continue to walk in this uh, power and glory and prayer, God will continue to just show you his glory and his goodness and give you different confirmations again and again that what you do is right, what you do is Holy Spirit, what you do is changing uh, Israel and changing nations, changing uh, this, this first of all, spiritual Israel, meaning spiritual life in Israel, fulfillment of, of uh, uh, later prophecies, praise God. Well, so first of all, I would love to share about uh, situation, uh, some uh, some joy and some concern. And uh, if you can write down points, and then uh, we, we, we will continue to pray. Because right now, it's a time of changes. And from tomorrow uh, afternoon, when we will have a final count of the uh, mandates, the coalitions will start to form. Uh, there is already agreements taking place, but then uh, you know that the the the, the uh, uh, titles and the jobs and the responsibilities will be shared uh, in the coalition, and in that moment, very important to pray. Uh, so, a few points that concerns us. First of all, uh, Bibi Netanyahu and his allies, beside of Likud himself, his party itself, which is uh, pretty much balanced, uh, you know, it's right wing, uh, but not radically right wing, you know, just just totally balanced right, right, right wing, which is good because they stand for uh, mostly biblical uh, uh, values, praise God. But also his coalition, the people who uh, already said they're going to work together, most of them uh, pretty much radical in Judaism. And there's a few parties that are uh, really radical really radical. And you know, it's Middle East. Sometimes like uh, Ben Gwir, you're going to hear his name more, you'll see it more and more. Smotrich, Ben Gwir, uh, they are very radical uh, when they speak against Arabs. And sometimes it's not really what they mean because they understand the reality of Israel, but they do that just to show uh, show power, show, show who is the who is the boss kind of, uh, you know, and uh, and that's that, that's okay, understandable, because they speak Middle Eastern language. And I know this language can be a little bit uh, too rude uh, for Europeans, but if you will hear what uh, Arab Israeli politicians, Muslim Israeli politicians said, you will be shocked actually, but it's never get to international media. So uh, that's okay. But uh, there is many uh, uh, religious parties joining Bibi Netanyahu, and that's a concern, uh, first of all, because many of them, they've been uh, saying uh, about uh, changing the law of Aliyah, because right now, Aliyah mostly is secular or just traditional Jewish families, but not, uh, not uh, Orthodox families. And that's what's concerning them, because they feel uh, when uh, Eastern European Jews come in, they're not uh, Orthodox, 90% of them are not Orthodox, they're just uh, Jewish people, uh, some French people. So they don't like it because they feel like they're losing power when more people uh, from this part of the uh, land or earth come into Israel and they want to uh, actually recheck 
the law of Aliyah and limited to have less people come. So we need to pray for that, that it won't be changed, uh, that Aliyah will continue uh, because it's a massive blessing for Israel. And it is in the Bible, it is biblical prophecies. So that's prayer uh, point number one, to pray that Aliyah will continue and Israel won't change any law. Uh, Regarding Aliyah, and I will say for those who don't know, Aliyah is return of Jewish people, the biblical uh, prophetic return of Jewish people back to the land of Israel as it is written in the Bible. So that's one. Uh, point two, uh, you know, the uh, re religious parties, they're pretty much sectarian and mostly they're known for uh, caring only for themselves, uh, caring only for their group, uh, so our prayer that uh, God will use them and they will enlarge their heart and they will start to think about uh, all country, all Israel, uh, all uh, you know societies we have in the land, and not only Orthodox, because that's what happened when Bibi lost uh, his uh, uh, power uh, because they were empowered uh, too much. And uh, just a little example, uh, let's say, uh, in a couple of years, the teachers were hired, population is growing, schools need more teachers. So the new teachers were hired and they hired 250 teachers. Uh, five of them were math, physics, and uh, uh, Hebrew language. And uh, over 200 just, uh, just Torah teachers, which is totally out of balance. I mean, we love Torah, we appreciate Torah. And by the way, in the lessons of Torah, we don't really teach Torah, I mean, just a little bit but also lots of uh, rabbinical uh, teaching, but that's okay. But you know, when it's out of balance, that's what causes people lots of questions. So we pray that they will learn their lessons and uh, they will be more balanced uh, and will not come again to next elections and all these changes. Uh, so that's kind of couple of couple of concern. The joy, uh, you know, the previous government was easy to give up, uh, like Lapit uh, talking with, uh, you know, uh, Hezbollah, gave up on uh, all this gas issue, gave up a big portion of Israel, actually for nothing. Uh, so uh, that's where we pray that won't happen and government will uh, function properly and under will understand Middle Eastern language because that's that's one of our problems. Sometimes Israel longing to be as a Western countries, as all the free world as other countries and they forgetting what we're dealing, who we're dealing with. And uh, you know, it's very complex and different societies around us. So we just pray for wisdom, uh, wisdom for a new party that uh, will make Israel strong. Uh, and uh, but the, of course, answer is not the war, but answer uh, it's a it's a really wise uh, political ways, and that's what we've been lacking sometimes. It's just wisdom and patience. Uh, so that's what we need, and unity in the land. So praise God. This time, this elections show that uh, there is more unity in government because even Netanyahu easily won and easily formed coalition. And last time it wasn't the case. So praise God. Uh, another change just to admit and just, uh, just uh, take it to prayer, but the Muslim uh, community in Israel, those who what uh, in, in Israel, uh, they get divisions and they branched from one main party, like unity of Arab par parties and Arab uh, voters, they branched to three different parties and it weakened them. So eventually only one party make it, uh, Ram. And uh, what good about this party, actually their leader was first in the history of Israel, who is Islamic, who is actually was pretty radical Islamic person earlier, but then he learned uh, many lessons. And he said, well, only to oppose and only to fight and only to oppose actually doesn't work in our case here in Israel. Uh, maybe we should change our strategy and start talking and cooperating with Israel. And actually he was uh, the one who joined Israeli government and of course got lots, lots of benefits, but uh, uh, it was actually, it's, it's actually a good process. Uh, if it's uh, once again, in, in a good balance of, uh, of working together and you know pushing on uh, uh, education in more Arab, spe Arab speaking, Israelis, the Muslim Israelis and all of that. So there is a great potential. And it's a time, uh, a kind of time of changes when Israeli Arabs, Israeli Muslims uh, will continue to be enemy. Uh, I mean, most of them, and that's what happened with uh, younger generation. Or 
uh, they will choose new ways, new ways of shalom, because for them as Israeli Arabs, all the doors are open and they uh, can get education in any Israeli university and then all the benefits. And actually, actually it's probably it's like in Europe, if you're Arab, if you're Muslim and you apply uh, to university, you need less points than Jewish person. Uh, that's kind of compensation uh, of Israel to that kind of society, to, to Muslim society. So they need uh, less points to be accepted than Jewish people. And also because Israeli Muslims, they don't go to army. Israeli, every Israeli, as you know, obligated to go in, in the army, it's mandatory, but not Muslims. So they actually had of Israeli girls and boys uh, two, three years ahead of time because they start in their studies earlier and start in their career earlier and getting actually better positions. Last uh, couple of decades, we see the change. Uh, also, there's many conversations in the land. Sometimes it's uh, out of balance. Uh, so it's a good thing, but they get education. Good thing that they get it in, but uh, so, so as you know, Israel, uh, it's a blessed country and overall, when you see Israel overall, we see God's hand over Israel. We see God's blessing over Israel. We see fulfillment of biblical prophecies. And what God said, that will, as he will bless us and multiply us. It's all great. But also, if you go from general picture, how God is keeping Israel, uh, to details, to lives of people, to problems in the society, actually there is lots of challenges <laughs> and problems. And I like better words, challenges. But uh, somehow, praise the Lord, uh, uh, challenge by challenge, we're overcoming the nation, overcoming, we see God's favor. Uh, but prayer, it's a big part of it, because prayer, what's making changes happen quicker, that's saving people's life, and again, giving to Israel security and uh, relatable prosperity. So praise the Lord for what he is doing. Now, last concern about new government because they are many of the radical uh, religious uh, government or, or politician parties. Uh, so uh, one of the concerns, they will have again more power. And uh, in, in the past, some of them use this power to actually uh, attack and persecute Israeli messianic congregations. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm a pastor and I'm a doctor of theology. I know the church history. And I know that sometimes, that's the way God, that's what got used to push his people and push body of Messiah, body of Christ, uh, uh, keep us on our knees and humility. Uh, yes. And from another hand, Bible said in Second Timothy, uh, First Timothy chapter two, verse one, pray and intercede and give thanks for all people and first of all for government, and that we will continue to have. Uh, peaceful life, shalom. We'll continue to have shalom and we will continue to be able to preach the gospel without heavy persecutions. So that's that's our prayer that uh, even though so many right wing and even religious people come to power, but we will be continue to uh, we will continue to be able to have our spiritual freedom, freedom to share the word of God as local Israeli believers. Okay, so that's the prayer point for now. And right now, as I said, Conditions will be formed, uh, more or less we know the, we call it Gush, or we know the uh, kind of parties that have pre-agreement with Bibi Netanyahu, but now it's time when uh, the people will receive titles and positions and who will become minister, who will become Knesset member, and who will take this office and that office. So we pray for God's favor, and God will uh, just bless Israel and Bibi Netanyahu to uh, share authority uh, in the right way and in a wise way. Uh, it's it. And uh, last but not least, uh, now it's taking me to the subject we're going to speak today about my message today. Uh, we just come out of another gospel event evangelism. So some time ago, uh, God actually led me to pray for evangelism in Beersheba. And uh, I felt led to organize gospel event for uh, new people who are new in the land, who just came to the land in the last uh, six months uh, because of war, kind of Jewish refugees. Uh, they're not really refugees. Officially, they are uh, Aliyah people, people who returned to Israel and given, getting their rights and, and citizenship right at the airport because they're Jewish. But they come to Israel uh, financially like refugees because they lost their houses, they lost their, their businesses, they lost their savings and they came to Israel running from the war, as you know, and we have big groups, two big groups coming to Israel, 
Ukrainian Jews who run from war uh, and from destruction from war zone. And we have Russian Jews actually last uh, two months, we have more Russian Jews coming to Israel, even than Ukrainian Jews, because those families, they also leaving behind everything, leaving businesses, leaving career, leaving houses, because they don't want to go to army, or then go, they don't go to send their kids, their sons, to uh, Russian army to fight Ukrainians, to, because they feel it's like a civil war, and they're running for, uh, from a uh, regime, they feel like that freedom is taken away, so they can actually come into Israel. But also it was unexpected, many of them waited to last minute, hoping for uh, good changes, but now they're here. Uh, and we work with this group of people, uh, with Russian Jews, Ukrainian Jews, Belarusian Jews, uh, and many others, but now that's the main focus. We also work with Ethiopian Jewish people, which is, uh, you know, it's not much on the media to Day, but there is war and military conflict continue in Ethiopia, and uh, there is difficulties for Jewish Ethiopian people, and many of them also come into Israel. It's kind of under a there, of course, Israeli government know that, and the Israeli government involved with that. But beside that, beside Israel, I don't hear many reports about Ethiopian Jews. But actually, right now we have movements of Jewish people from the north back to Israel, and movement of Jewish people from south. Uh, back to Israel. So uh, praise the Lord. It's a time of biblical prophecies. It's a uh, time of their fulfillments. So praise God. We have these movements and as a, as a ministry, we involve, we involved and we uh, help in over a thousand families every month with food packages. With, uh, we also help in hundreds with uh, clothing and, and furniture because these guys started their life from scratches. It's a wonderful movement. So uh, uh, we build a relationship with these people, we create community, uh, we create different WhatsApp groups and Telegram groups and lots of information, education, and leading them and guiding them. So helping them uh, uh, practically with food, practically helping them with information and support. Uh, so, uh, so it's wonderful. And eventually uh, we invited them, uh, my team invited them to go with us to Beersheba uh, because Beersheba is city of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you just change your opinion Bible and read about Beersheba and connection to the fathers, uh, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their stories, uh, it's just powerful because there is so much happened in Beersheba and around Beersheba. And in Hebrew, Beersheba means Be'er Shiva towards the uh, well of oath. Because this uh, the Abraham and Abimelech, they gave oath to each other by the well. So that's a well of old, Beersheba. Uh, city of Genesis, because it's mentioned first of all, a lot in Genesis. So in Israel we call it land of Genesis, and city of Genesis. And uh, uh, so we uh, we invited people and we had a uh, venue only for 400 people. And uh, all 400 people came up and actually more people wanted to come, which had not enough room when we needed to say, uh, no, sorry, next time. Uh, so we got 400 uh, Olim to that place and I, I share with them story about Abraham, Isaac and Jacob because you know in Beersheba, Abraham spent uh, quite a lot of time going between Beersheba and Gerar. From Beersheba, Abraham went to, uh, went to Jerusalem even before Jerusalem was built, Mount of Moria and he took his son Isaac uh, from Beersheba and actually from Beersheba to Jerusalem, it's, uh, there is a way of patriarch. You still call it till today, way of patriarch. And it's take three days walking, three days walking. So they walk three days to uh, to the Jerusalem, Mount of Moria, Temple Mount. And Abraham was ready to uh, sacrifice, sacrifice his son. And actually, and we spoke about Yeshua, the, the, how God sacrificed his son, praise the Lord. And you know the rest of the story. Then we see Isaac, how Isaac was actually... Uh, digging wells in the city of Gerar. And he was bo born in the city of Gerar and he actually needed to flee uh, from Gerar uh, to Beersheba uh, because of the uh, disputes with the shepherds uh, over the wells of Abraham and his wells. So he needed to leave this area and move to Beersheba. And uh, then Ab Abimelech saw the blessing in Isaac's life and he came. Also, uh, uh, Jacob, Actually, Jacob, uh, when uh, he got invited by his son Joseph uh, to Egypt, uh, Joseph said, come to Egypt 
You know, he didn't want to go to Egypt at first. So he came to Beersheba. He built the altar, uh, restored the altar of Abraham. And it's the same altar of Isaac and now altar of Jacob. He built the altar uh, in Beersheba and the sacrifice. And he was seeking for face of the Lord, face of God. And actually God showed, showed up in the dream at the nighttime and said to him, uh, Jacob, go to Egypt, go to Egypt. Uh, I will be with you. And he gave him prophecy, prophetic word. And praise the Lord, he listened. And he actually went to Egypt also from Beersheba. So lots of history. And I, I preached the gospel, I preached the history of the Bible, uh, to our people. Uh, you know, Elijah actually ran from uh, 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 Elizabeth, yeah, right? Elizabeth, I think, in Hebrew, it's Isabel. Uh, he ran from Zevel to all the way to Beersheba and then from Beersheba to Beersheba desert an angel came to feed him. And Agar ran with the, her son Ishmael from Beersheba to Beersheba desert. So there's lots, lots of stories, praise God. And we were standing in Beersheba. First time having mass evangelism in Beersheba. And I preached the gospel, I preached the history of Abraham, Abraham Isaac, and Jacob, about God, who, who been called God of Abraham. And then God of Abraham and Isaac, and then Abraham, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, God of Israel, hallelujah. So all these stories can go to Beersheba and I preach the gospel and the Holy Spirit move in a very powerful way. And uh, actually 90% of people, literally 90% of people, more or less 90%, uh, we have these footages and video and pictures, they stood up and they prayed, uh, we call it sinner's prayer in English, right? They prayed prayer. And they invited Yeshua as their Messiah to their heart. They cried to the Lord for, 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 for salvation. So it was powerful. It was magnificent. Hallelujah. I was deeply moved, you know, to see what God is doing in Israel today. And once again, it excites me for a few reasons. First of all, it's wonderful to see people get saved. Hallelujah. Second, it's, they are in Israel and they are Israelis. They are Israelis, new Israelis, they have Israeli citizenship, they're, they're Jewish people, hallelujah. And, but also it's fulfillment of biblical prophecies. And that's what I want to uh, talk to you about. So I want to read Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah 37. Uh, from the beginning, uh, it's a story about uh, dry bones. 37.1, it says here, the hand of the Lord came upon me and I brought out uh, me out in the spirit for the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full, full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. I read it from uh, New King James Version. The bones were very dry, very, very dead, very dry. And I think I shared it with uh, also Annette and her group, uh, prayer group, uh, but I really feel I want to read it again and I want to prophesy with you as it's written here in this prophetic chapter, because I see that we are actually at the fulfillment of this chapter in many ways. And I know some prophecies, they're going like waves at different stages and repeating itself sometimes, like one wave of Aliyah, another wave of Aliyah, third wave, of Aliyah, but uh, it's still, we see it happening. So then verse three, and he said to me, son of man, can those bones live? So I answered, oh Lord, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy unto those bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to those bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Hallelujah. So I want to, I just pause here and, and just let's think together what happening here. You know, uh, when you have that body, that person, we have hope for resurrection. As a believers, I know this word would say, when person died, it's end. It's it, done. But as a believers, of Bible believers, actually, we uh, believe in resurrection. And we know biblical stories of resurrection, probably even some modern stories of resurrection. So that body, there's still a little bit of hope. But dry bones, come on, dry bones, that's the end. It's finished, it's end. But actually God is taking profit to the dry bones. And he wants to show him what's he going to do. Uh, and he wants to show them as much as impossible, yet supernatural 
what he is going to do. So he show, show him impossible, show him value of dead bones. And now we're talking to him to do, uh, if you really think, crazy thing, crazy thing, big challenge. But I said to him, you know what? It's time to prophesy over dead bones. Prophesy and say for things happen that actually in physical, totally, 100% impossible. And what I like here, prophet has obeyed. When he had no words to answer, when God asked him, will these bones of life? He said, you know, Lord. So uh, actually a very smart answer. Had not enough faith to say yes. <laughs> but at least he said, hey, you know, Lord. He got, he found uh, a getaway, uh, you know, with that. But uh, verse, eight, say, verse five says here, uh, that's time to prophesy, to speak breath over these uh, bones, speak life over these bones. And I want to, uh, speak here uh, about Israel, because this prophecy about Israel, but also about your life. Think about your circumstances. Think about your uh, situations. Think about your difficulties, what you face, the challenges. Think about England, your neighbors, your neighborhoods, what happened in your country. And I'm thinking what happened in Israel. And I see we need many miracles. Sometimes situation looks like dry bones. The case is lost. Uh, you know, the case is lost. No one interested in really uh, true and living God. And there are so many changes, so many difficulties. Uh, but God has a last word. And his last word oftentimes is given to us that he, we as his people, will speak the word, prophesy the word, proclaim biblical prophecies, proclaim God's uh, promises, proclaim prophecies we have received for our lives. And uh, even if they haven't come to pass, they haven't uh, come to pass yet, but we shall proclaim them, proclaim them. We shall pray them, pray with them. Okay, verse six. I will put uh, sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put bread in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And then it said, the prophet said, so I prophesied. I love it. You see, he did prophesy. Hallelujah. That's what uh, your uh, prayer group do. You pray in prophetic prayers. You prophesy what God has said. You are repeating and proclaiming the word of the Lord, prophecies of the Bible. And that's where his power is in his word. So he said, so I prophesied. Hallelujah. I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I look this uh, Sinew, sinews and the flesh come up on them and the skin covered them over but there was no breath in them okay so we see great movement amazing scene amazing situation and change but it wasn't complete yet so the bones come together the skin grown uh and it says they come together and they become as a West Army, next uh, words that says, they become next army, West Army, but without Spirit of God. Verse 9, also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds of breath, and breathe on this slain, that they may live. Hallelujah. So he's actually speaking about breath to come uh, from the four corners of the world. So he's saying, uh, I prophesied first time, they become skeletons, they become people without, without spirit. And then God said, okay, prophesy again. And you know, speaking of Israel, and later on you will see that that's what God is speaking about. That's the condition of Israel right now. We were scattered in the lands, in countries and nations, as prophecies said, as God said uh, before it happened. And we survive but we become dry bones. By, by the end of times, like many prophecy, prophecy says, by the end of times, God visited us, people of Israel in the nations, and he brought us out from the nations to, to, the, to the land of Israel. But our condition is mostly strong, blessed, even blessed in many ways, but dead army, people without spirit. So, uh, 
this was first moment of God and first time to prophesy and pray. And I know you people, you uh, Christians, you Christians in England. And I just came from uh, mission trips to Sweden and Norway. And I meet people who prayed for Israel for 60 years, for actually 70 years even. And uh, they, keep, they keep praying for Israel until today, praise the Lord. But now it's a new day. It's a new time. It's a new season for Israel. So verse 10 says, so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood up their feet an exceedingly great army. Praise the Lord. So uh, I want to put your intention. God said, prophesy and say to spirit, come over these dry bones and now over people without spirit. But he didn't say prophesy. But he said, prophesy and tell them to come from four corners of the earth. And what does it mean? Spirit come from four corners on the earth, but not from heaven. I believe it's a reflection of prayers, prayers of Christians, prayers of Christians who pray for Israel from different nations and prophesy from the north and south and west and east. People who pray for Israel, proclaiming blessing, proclaiming biblical prophecies to come to pass. People who pray and pray and pray. And because of your prayer, uh, the power is coming. Not only from heaven, but also from nations. And of course, it's well connected to heaven, but I like this expression. He said, from the four corners of the earth. Hallelujah. Spirit coming to Israel and uh, giving breath to Israel, uh, you know, in power in Israel. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, those bones are the whole house of Israel. So we see it's about Israel, definitely about Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Hallelujah. So then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves of my people and brought you up from your graves. Hallelujah. So uh, what God is talking about here, uh, as you know, being in Europe, being European, being uh, English, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, the history and how Israel become a nation. Uh, you know, we have this, we had a second world war and the movement of Jewish people to Israel and many of them, they came out of concentration camps. Uh, many of them suffered the second world war, but many of them really literally came out of concentration camps. And there's lots of documentary done by Americans, done by British and done, done by Soviet, uh, many films. And uh, when soldiers came to concentration camps to liberate Jewish people, what they have seen, they have seen a valley of dry bones, uh, lots, lots, lots of dry bones together. And actually they have seen uh, like walking dead, like a skeletons, people who have been looking like a living skeletons coming out of concentration camps. And concentration camps were built as you know, uh, as a, a Jewish solution. And the goal of this, and purpose of these camps were to bury Jewish nation in those camps. So they were actually built as graveyard for Jewish people uh, to kill them all little by little. That was the Hitler's plan. That was the Nazis plan. And interesting enough, but God is speaking here, true prophet, about that long before it happened. So you're telling people of Israel, you've been saying our hope is gone. That's what they said in concentration camps. We are cut off. That's what they said. Uh, we are dying here. It's end of our nation. It's it. That's it. That's end. They were saying. But God said, in that moment, when you're going to say these words, when you're going to say we are cut off, when you're going to say we are dying, when you're going to say we are we are living in our graves, which is concentration camps, God said, then I will visit you and I will take you out of your graves uh, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, hallelujah. So that's the movement we have seen from the 19th, beginning of 19th century, uh, even more after Second World War. 
it continued with different waves of Aliyah. Uh, you know, the Soviet Aliyah in the 90s, it was very powerful movement of God, taking uh, over a million people out of uh, northern countries, out of Soviet regime, praise the Lord. And then God said, then, and by the way, now, right now, we have same 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 thing happened, another wave of Aliyah, another wave of return of Jewish people back to Israel from all these countries, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, and more countries, of course. But then it says, verse 13, what will happen next? We can read what will happen next after the return and settlement here in the land of Israel. And by the way, we are involved with that deeply. We're receiving these people. The government received them and giving them first aid. And then we step in, in and help them uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, and uh, it's amazing to walk with them and go with them we create creating community for them it's just powerful to see what God is doing and how God is using uh, Messianic congregation congregations because we teach other congregations how to do the same but verse 13 prophetic fulfillment then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O my people and brought you up from your graves one again and 14 I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and there is more, of course. So we see that what's going to be next. First, return and restoration of Israel. And then God said, I will pour my spirit on you, and you will know me. And of course, no one can know God. No one can know God the Father without Yeshua. Even Jewish people, we need Yeshua. Yeshua himself entered to Jerusalem temple and he spoke to Jewish people only. There were no other people around him. He came and spoke to Jewish people and said, I am the way and the, and the truth. Uh, no one can come to Father, but only through me. He said, not to Gentiles, he said, first of all, to Jewish people. So gospel is power of God to the Jew first. Hallelujah. So he spoke to Jewish people, telling them, you cannot come to Father. Mm -mm. You cannot come to Father, uh, God of Israel. You cannot come to him, uh, but only through me, Messiah of Israel, who given his life uh, for redemption of, of Israel, first of all, and humanity. Praise the Lord. So uh, next move of, Israel, of God it's actually salvation in the land of Israel. And you see, reading these prophecies about that will take you out. And some other prophecies. I will take you out from the nations, and then I will bring you and establish you in the nations, and then I will pull in my spirit on you. And can, can you imagine? That's what we have seen uh, just a few days ago. I went 400 people who are new to the land of Israel who just came out of the nations broken. And they are broken, I'm telling you. It's not like previous Aliyah, even from the same countries. They are broken because it's war, a uh, time of uncertainty, time of fear, time of death, time of death, time of destruction, difficult times, crazy times, big crises, people losing their loved ones, people losing their houses. They've been taken by other government and soldiers or houses been taken by, I mean, destroyed by bombs. They're coming from war zone. Other groups come out of, out of uh, fear and change in their country and they come to Israel. Then the Bible said, I will take you out. I will keep you, I will bless you. I will plant you in the land of Israel. And then I will pull my spirit on you. Hallelujah. I know it's not all over Israel yet. I mean, it's not all Israel yet, but we see the movement have started with people who are people of Aliyah people who are new in the land, Israeli Jewish people who are new in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. That's a big joy. Uh, that's a big victory. That's a celebration because it's fulfillment, fulfillment of the biblical prophecies. And you know, another point I want to make, actually it is, it is remind me what Jesus have done when he was on this earth. What type of people and region he decided to be at. Where was his office? In the short days, he was based in Galilee. His uh, base, his office was in Capernaum. His house was in Capernaum. So he was moving in and out from Capernaum, his center. And he spent 90% of time in Capernaum, in Galilee, and all the places around Galilee. Yes, we see Yeshua going to Jerusalem. We see Yeshua going to Jerusalem. But if you check 
what happened around in the New Testament, you will find he would go to Jerusalem only for biblical feasts, only to celebrate biblical feasts. So actually, I'm sure he came to Jerusalem only three times a year because we have three pilgrimage feasts when we shall go to Jerusalem. It's Passover, it's Feast of Shavuot, Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacles that we just celebrated, Feast of Tabernacles, hallelujah. So for these three feasts, Yeshua was going to Jerusalem uh, every year, and that's when we see him in Jerusalem. All the rest of his time, and you can check it in the Bible, when you see Jesus in Jerusalem, go, go backward and see why he's in Jerusalem, what he's doing in Jerusalem. He's there for feasts. But the rest of the time is spent in Galilee, just in Galilee, going to Caesarea Philippi, just once, going to other places like Mount Tabor, once, but walking around Galilee and preaching in villages and cities of Judah, uh, of Israel, hallelujah. And also Judah, of course, we're, we're going to Jerusalem. So, uh, and we say this, uh, being that said, he spent most of his time in Galilee. What type of people were in Galilee? As we can see reflection of it in the New Testament, uh, there were people who, by, by the opinion of uh, Jerusalem rabbis and spiritual leaders of Jerusalem, they wasn't Jewish enough. They wasn't educated spiritually like others in Jerusalem. They wasn't good enough. And actually they even call uh, Galilee of Gentiles. So the Jewish people in Galilee in that time, in days of Jesus, later changed. But in days of Jesus, uh, they've been looked down. They've been uh, looked as not educated like we here in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So that was connected to geography. And the geography describes condition of people. There wasn't good enough, there wasn't Jewish enough, there wasn't spiritual enough, there was almost like Gentiles, they were kind of put aside and something, that something can come, come out of Galilee, can, that's can some, some good can come out of Nazareth, all these questions uh, for a reason, you know, so Yeshua choose this group of people. And what Yeshua, Jesus, doing today in the land of Israel, actually is walking and touching, touching most of all same people. People who are coming back to Israel as Aliyah, as return from a northern country, and people who are not much educated. They are Jewish, so Jewish identity is important for them, but they're not religious. They're not religious. That's why many rabbis look at them like, oh, they are not like us they're not i mean yeah they're jewish but you know they're not like us they're not uh, they don't know torah uh, they can believe in yeshua because they just don't know torah good enough and on, only that that's why but actually no because they're like galileans they were broken they were uh, humble and they were open to listen and they actually the first they were first who received yeshua and 11 apostles actually 12 in his lifetime and after afterwards 11 apostles they were from galilee hallelujah so i see same way uh, as God, Jesus did, uh, used strategically certain region because certain people live there. We see the same thing. So it's not connected to region in Israel because we were, every, everybody lives all over, you know, religious, not religious, uh, Russian Jews, Ethiopian Jews, and uh, kind of Israelis who've been here for a couple of generations, well, mixed in different cities. We live all over. Uh, but I see the, the uh, uh, demography. So it's just amazing to think how a strategies of Jesus at work and what he's doing today. So I'm sharing with you, just to give you an update, what you're going to see in the future, what you're going to see uh, God going to do. So actually, actually today, the movement of God is among all these Northern Jews. And I specifically say Northern Jews because they come from the North and because prophecies describe them as those who come from the North, hallelujah. So uh, next prayer request, the biggest prayer request, it's a prayer for revival and workers, like always. Revival and workers. Revival, revival for all Israel. Yes, because he said, I will pull my spirit on you, on all of them. But first, for revival on people who just come into the land, uh, Ethiopian Jews, uh, Russian, Ukrainian Jews, and together with others, because they're broken, they're open, and it's a time to reach them out. And we have lack of workers, like I said uh, uh, workers, lack of uh, lack of uh, uh, many times funds uh, to help them properly, to reach them out properly. 
So it's a beautiful, a beautiful time when God is uh, at the move, and I'm blessed that my congregation be right in the middle of these prophecies, uh, being hands of Yeshua, Jesus, being His uh, uh, loving hands, being the people who smiling and hugging them and helping them and blessing them, blessing them spiritually, blessing them practically, blessing them with food and clothes, but also sharing the message of hope. And the Bible said in Isaiah 40, Comfort, comfort, my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to the heart of Jerusalem, uh, praise the Lord. So that's what we do. We comfort people uh, in, by our words, by our deeds, by our help, and we speak salvation. We use, we use mostly soft evangelism. Uh, we speak salvation into their lives, and they are responding. Hallelujah. So it's a new day for Israel, and uh, uh, this movement is keep going, keep going. So we're praying. We're praying and my prayer that God will do wake up call for all the Messianic congregations because many congregations wasn't ready when it happened. They, they wasn't ready when it happened. They wasn't ready to help. They wasn't ready to reach out. They wasn't ready to to receive. They just see what happened and it's it. Uh, but some were happy. Uh, some were ready. Praise the Lord. Some were ready. So I pray because we're sharing more and more experience with other congregations. So let's pray together for wisdom and understanding of times for Messianic congregations, that we will be able to reach out, to bless these people, to be an answer, and uh, to move in the spirit, but also to reap the harvest. And of course, prayer for, uh, in Hebrew we say, mashabim, prayer for resources, and prayer for workers. Because like always, when more people want to get, want to know about Yeshua, more people need to be discipled. It's, uh, we always, uh, need more workers and that's that's time uh, for us like for example uh, we are one of the large congregations in israel and uh, we are blessed we have uh, 120 volunteers uh, praise god uh, that's what enable us to do a lot so we have uh, very few staff but lots and lots of volunteers and it is not enough there's more there is more and let's pray for 100 people who sign up and they wanted to come with us to Beersheba but they wasn't able. So we pray now uh, to, reach, to reach out to them uh, during November and do outreach with this, just hundred small outreach, uh, but let opportunity to everyone who wants to hear the gospel now to hear the gospel. Well, that's it. Uh, and if you have questions, if you have time for questions, what time is it? If you have time for questions, I'm here to reply. And I would love to pray with you and receive all the prayer from you, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you. That that's so wonderfully encouraging. There's obviously an, an openness, um, you know, in present. Obviously, the Holy Spirit's, um, you know, blowing over the over the land, the ruach, and uh, yeah, it's so so very encouraging to to hear that. And I think I believe people will have um, questions. Um, and uh, but um, I'm wondering now if if maybe Annette, because you've just come from there, Annette, would you just pray uh, for um, the work uh, that's done by Pastor Israel's? A group D does your group have a name uh yes uh, our name is Beit Hallel congregation we operate out of Beit Hallel congregation we are in uh, 10 cities of Israel but the, the center is now Ashdod and our name is Beit Hallel congregation Beit Hallel. Hallel. so let's pray for those cities now what I'd like you to do um every, everybody I want you to just um be a hundred percent with this prayer because we may not uh, be able to go into groups tonight, but th this is a big time in Israel we, in every way. Um, mm -hmm. And so also we'd like you to put on in case anyone would like to sew into your work, um, if you'd like to put up how they could do that and uh, 
you know, the, the dovetail will be sending something, but but perhaps individuals as well would like to feel that they would um, that they would like to feel that they were a part of this wonderful work that's going on. Mm -hmm. so if you put something in in the in the chat, and then Annette, if you if you just pray. Mm -hmm. Um, just f um, for the cities where mm. where mm. it's there's, it's operating. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Mm. Oh, Abba Father! Oh, we just want to lift holy hands to you right now, Lord, and just bless you from out of Zion. Lord, we just want to bless you out of Zion for Zion because Zion is the, 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 the city that you have chosen to place your holy name. And we are so thankful, Father God, that we are the Nosreen, the Goim, Lord, in the nations that you've called to be the watchman on the walls, Father God, making intercession for the nation of Israel. We thank you that you've called us to stand alongside the people, Father of Israel, Father God, and to and to, to pray and to intercede and to see your, your prophetic words, Lord, just coming into fruition, Lord. Father God, to see the fulfillment of your word. The fields are white unto harvest, Lord. Lord, but the laborers are few, and we pray that you'll raise up many more workers, Lord, in the, uh, for the harvest field. Father, there's a, it's a big, wide mission, Lord, and we know, Father, uh, that Israel, Father God, is, 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 is actually plowing the field, plowing the field, Father God, and sowing the seed of your word, Lord, and Lord, it's really taking effect, Lord. And Lord, I want to thank you, Lord. Lord, for where the word of God is going forth out from these cities, Lord, and that you're reaping a harvest there, Lord. But Lord, Lord, we need more laborers there, Father God, to bring the, to bring the souls in, Lord, the harvest of souls, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for all this work that was being able to be done, Father, through between Rosh Hashanah and, 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 and Sukkot, Lord, we thank you for the work, Lord. We thank you that Pastor Israel, that you've risen him up, Lord, at such a time as this, and you've filled him with your Ruach HaKodesh, and you've appointed him, Father God, over these 10 cities, Lord, and Lord, Father God, and that he's obedient to the call, Lord, but Lord, strengthen his arm, strengthen his arm, Lord, Lord, and raise up many workers, Father God, because Lord, it's your heart's desire to see the Jewish people faith to see them come into the kingdom of God because it's not your will that any of them should perish and go to a lost eternity but you want Lord Father God the people to come in Lord Lord we know Father God the Paul says Rabbi Shaul says Father God that all Israel will be saved and we're praying that in now Lord we're praying that in now and Father Lord I pray that you'll raise up the Gentiles the Nasreen the Goyins Father God to stand and pray like their own lives depend on this harvest coming in so Father I pray we just bless you Lord we just bless you and thank you Lord Father for these lives that are being saved and we thank you for even though if there are seeds that are laying dormant but they will come to fruition lord because lord will some sow and some water but lord you gain the increase so lord we pray for an increase an increase lord of souls coming into the kingdom lord a real courage and power of your holy spirit to ignite the seeds any seeds that have fallen on the ground that they will not just stay in the ground but they will they will germinate father god and they will come forth lord lord we pray lord Prophet Israel has just spoken about dry bones. And Lord, if there are dry bones there, Lord, we pray for a resurrection. We pray for the fire of the Holy Ghost to touch these bones, that there be a resurrection 
of bone, Father God, that will form sinew and come alive and, Father, come into the kingdom. Lord, we pray because when all Israel is saved, we know what it means for the rest of the Gentile world. So, Lord, we pray. Oh, God, let not any of them perish, but all come to everlasting life and continue to bless Israel and his son and his family, Father God, that are all involved, Father God, in the work, Lord, that you've called him to. And Lord, not only just Israel, but there's so many, Father God, it's, it's as if Israel knows that it is time, it is time to come out from the four court, the four walls of the of the buildings and go out into the highways and the byways. I thank you, Lord, that you're doing great things in, within the nation of Israel with the Messianic congregation. Lord, you've really woken them up, Lord, to understand the times, that the times are so important now, Father God, to see, Lord, the people come into the kingdom and are saved. So, Father, we just bless you and thank you for all that the pastor Israel has brought to us tonight. It's been so encouraging. And we just pray that even those that are not here tonight, even when they listen to the recording, that they will be encouraged and they all too will enter into prayer uh, to, uh, for this continuation of this amazing work that is being done in Israel, even as we speak. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yes, I was just reading Psalm 102, you needn't really um, turn to it now, but verse 12 of Psalm 102 says, but you, O Lord, are enthroned forever, and the fame of your name endures to all generations. You will arise and have mercy for Zion, for it is time. It is time to have compassion for her. Yes, the set time has come. And it was like lit up the designated moment for a quickening um, so that his covenant is a covenant keeping God for that covenant to be kept. And, um, and then what I've known that verse for quite a long time, but what struck me was verse 15 then. Well, we'll, we'll read 14 and 15. For your servants take pleasure in the stones and show pity for her dust. And so the nations will fear and revere the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory, when the Lord builds up Zion, he will appear in his glory. This is, this is a time when we're looking, um, we're looking to Israel, but, but, Israel's destiny is linked to the nations. That's her destiny to be a light to the nations. And it's also the time when, when we must make ourselves ready too, because when the Lord builds up Zion, he will appear in glory. <laughs> and um, as I was as I was reading it, I I just felt um, a quickening in my spirit <coughs> of, of of what faithful. There won't be one word when the Lord comes back soon. There won't be one word, one promise that He won't have kept, and. Um, it's a, it's a joy. It's such a joy to partner with the Lord on the page he's on. This is the page the Lord's on. <laughs> this is the where he is. He's 
he's building up Zion um, ready to return and ready to, to bless all the nations through her. So we're not just praying for Israel. Israel is the center of kingdom. And I hope you've all made a note of those special prayer requests. Um, and so we'll just have time, I think, for a couple of questions and maybe a prayer following those questions uh, before we go out with them. Um, with a, a, a worship song but uh, is there somebody with a question that they would like to be asking pastor israel at this time just unmute yourself if you have a question Well, meanwhile, when people thinking of question, I can also tell you, if you like to continue to pray for the people who've been with us in Beersheba and pray a prayer to turn to Yeshua first time in their life, now we're going to start follow up, call everyone, invite them to discipleship course and different uh, meetings and congregation and giving them Bible and etc. There's many, many options. So our people will be spending next days uh, to call them and talk to them and invite them. Uh, so pray for these people. And if you would love to uh, see the video from the event, I sent you on the chat uh, my email. So you can email me and I will be sending you the video and some pictures from the event. It will make it live for you. And you'll know now you're praying for, for the next few weeks for these people who just heard the gospel in Israel and you will have their pictures and their video. How amazing. I, I, yeah, I feel excited in my spirit and um, I can see that we've got uh, Robbie on and Robbie has prepared in the past um, a, a book of prayers for Israel and to bless Israel and if anybody would want to get that booklet I think you wrote it did you with Jill Gower Robbie unmute yourself no, um, I actually wrote wrote that one and had it published. Um, yeah, it's out oh, of print out now, of, Brenda. Is it out of print? Yeah, and yeah. And maybe sorry. it needs to get in print again. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's a nudge to uh, get in print. <laughs> um, so anyway, so while while you're unmuted, um, do you have a question, Robbie? No, it's been wonderful listening to Pastor Israel this evening and, you know, to getting, getting your prayer points and, um, yeah, just a, a little bit excited about the, um, the elections and, you know, really praying that all that falls into place, really. So, um, no, I just think it's such a privilege to be on a platform like this, to be able to pray for Israel, to, to bless Israel. And uh, because we know as we do, then the blessings come back into our nation. So, um, yeah, so thank you, Pastor Israel. Thank you for all that you shared this evening. And we just so bless you and your, your congregations. And, and I think our spirits have been ignited again tonight, you know, about actually hearing from Israel, actually hearing from someone who's there working uh, and, and blessing the land. So, so thank you so, so much. Bless you. Mm, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a question because of the others. Um, so now that Bibi has got him, what we did here was that uh, Lapid was open to a two-state solution, which we know is not God's <laughs> solution. And th things were obviously spoken of with Biden and so on. So, um, will do you feel that um, Netanyahu will undo all that and that he will stand firm um, that that the two state solution will won't work? Uh, it's a, actually a very difficult question, and that's why we need to pray for him, because you can imagine how 
strong pressure is on every prime minister, including in witchcraft, uh, international witchcraft, and you know, in Islamic witchcraft, and on and on. Uh, there is very, very strong pulse of political pressure. You know, we need to face kings, uh, so say kings or rulers of the nations, where they're, uh, for one hand, offering like billions and enormous ideas and support, from another hand, demanding like some things like a two state solution and etc. And uh, many actually strong men, when they become prime ministers of Israel, uh, they couldn't stand in this pressure. And they were right, right wing, they would say never. And then they started to compromise and give back because of pressure. And in their mind, they did it for a better future. But actually, uh, time passed by and we see it was big, big mistakes being done actually even by right government. And yeah, you know what's interesting with Israel, actually biggest uh, compromises of land was done under the right wing governments. I know it doesn't make sense. But that's the history of Israel, last uh, 30 years, especially 30, 40 years of history. The Oslo Agreement, it was right government in Israel, you know. <clears throat> you know they gave up uh, so many lands and, and, and rights, um, unconditional actually. I mean, there were written conditions, but in fact, it was uh, not controlled and not followed up and etc. It's one of the examples. So uh, that's why uh, you can see the battle is spiritual. So even people who are from the right wing or have strong will, strong desire, uh, not to compromise, eventually compromising. So we hope not, we pray he would not, but he needs uh, our prayers and your prayers. We need to pray for yeah. a biblical approach to that. And I can tell you, having strong men from right wing doesn't guarantee anything in Israel because it's norm enormous pressure. Would someone like to unmute themselves and pray for Netanyahu that he will not be moved? Um, that God will strengthen um, his him in his in his wisdom. Someone like to unmute themselves and pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much that so far we can see your hand guiding the events in Israel and the election of Bibi. Lord, we thank you that he is a man who has been tried and tested in the fire, and he has been found wanting, and that there is much that perhaps needs correction. But Lord, we thank you that you're in the middle of all of that, and we pray that he may now stand more firm in the most more um, loving and honouring of you in this new position that she has been given. And we pray that he may realize that it is a sacred task that he has. It's not just a political one. And we pray, Father, that he may uh, awaken to what this time and his, his place in the unfolding affairs of Israel is all about. So we just pray for him, for his advisors, and for Israel at this crucial time in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 I just, I just want to just add one thing to that prayer is uh, that Bibi Netanyahu will not allow the, 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 I know that a lot of the religious people stand and support Bibi, that um, he will not allow them to um, block the aliyah that is necessary to come up from the nations. Uh, especially to block Aliyah for Messianics or anyone considered to be um, missionaries. Um, and that I learned yesterday that yesterday was the Aliyah, the day of uh, Aliyah. And Aliyah is so important for the people. There are many in the, in, in the nations that are believers. And with the, 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 the religious people supporting him, as the way they do, you know, especially in, um, those that are in charge of the interior ministry, they're the ones that will block the Aliyah. So we just pray, Almighty God, that you will, Lord, um, as Bibi Netanyahu has, has won with such a, a majority, unlike before when it was such a struggle for him to form um, this party, Lord, that you will, Lord, Minister to him, Lord, Father, 
minister to him and break down those things that blocked him in the first place. Father, to allow the Aliyah. Aliyah is so important, Lord. It's prophetic. It's what your word says, that the people will come up from the nations. And we know that many, many, many uh, believers are married either to Christians or Christians married to Jews, and they need to come up, Father God, as your word says, and settle upon the mountains of Judea and Samaria. Uh, Father God, that we know you that what you said in Ezekiel 36, that it needs to happen, Lord, so that the mountains themselves will shoot their branches. So, Lord, we pray, almighty God, Father God, that nothing will block the Aliyah, Lord, we, we've seen what you're doing already with you, bringing up the, the, the B'nai Manasseh, the Ethiopian Jews are coming in. Lord, we see the people are coming in from the Ukraine, Father God, and we know that the biggest alia of all time is yet to take place, Lord. But we know, Father God, that, Lord, that, that, that this will happen, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray because, Lord, when the people come up, Lord, and you begin to, to, do, to do a surgery on their heart, Lord, and to remove the scales from their eyes, Lord, and reveal Yeshua to them. So, Lord, we pray for a groundwork, a preparation, Lord, to be done right now in prayer and in the spirit, Lord, for a shift, a shift, Lord, a, a paradigm shift, Lord. Father God, that what was done before will not be done now and that Netanyahu will come from a new place, a new position with a new perspective. Lord, we pray, almighty God. I pray that, that Abi Lipkin, Father God, will make it, will, will somehow, Lord, get enough votes to get in to make it as an MK, to have a foot in there, Lord, with the Bible block party that stands for Aliyah. Lord, Aliyah is so important, Lord. And so many people, Father God, have been turned away just because they are messianic. So, Lord, we pray, have your way. Break down this, 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 this deception, Father God, Lord, of what the Orthodox Jewish people do, Father God, in, in, in the persecution of messianics, Lord. So, Father, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way in this, Lord, because the Aliyah is just so important for the nation and for the land. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers tonight in your truest mighty name. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you. We feel, we feel the passion and uh, all of us are saying Amen. And um, I just say, Pastor Israel, that um, I, I, I write uh, mu music and songs and some songs um, have been uh, about Israel and come from a very deep place in my heart. And I'm wondering, um, Annette, mm. whether we, instead of the song we chose, whether mm. it would be easy to mm -hmm. do and bringing you home. Okay, well, you keep talking and I'll keep looking. <laughs> yes. So I'm, that's J Julie, as you know. Um, let's make this our prayer uh, as we, as we cover the work that's being done spiritually in the nation, we just, you know, that Ezekiel 37 shows the restoration of Israel in stages. Um, and really, there's only the, there's only really waiting the breath now, <laughs> in a way, you know, and, uh, and as we proclaim these words, you know, as we proclaim, as we feel God's heart. And so th this song, tell us when it's ready, Annette. Um, I felt God's heart so strongly as I wrote it that he was bringing them home to tear the veil, to reveal Yeshua, to let them fulfill the destiny, to show them the Father's love. And... Um, so it, it's a, it's a very uh, to me it's a very special song. Oh, mercy, how do I get the zoom back? 
And so um, I'm just I'm just going to say, will you make this a prayer as we close the, the platform? Um, but we've all got so much to pray for, all of us, um, to pray for Netanyahu, to pray for God's purposes, because God's raising up Israel to bless the world. <laughs> He's not just blessing Israel to bless Israel. This is because God loves the world. So we'll, we'll just make this song then. I'm bringing you home uh, our prayer as we close tonight. Thank you for coming on on Friday. We've got Jenny Watson, who also runs a, uh, some, a fellowship that um, prays a lot for Israel. So God's, God's raising up the intercessors oh, yes. uh, to be watchmen on the walls. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you then, Annette.
Yes, Lord, heal and bless in tenderness all those refugees so broken. Reveal Messiah's love. Take them, Lord, and let your faithful covenant stand. And Lord, as we just proclaim, Lord, your everlasting covenant for your people, we pray your blessing, Lord, on those who minister, that your provision will always be there to help them, Lord in every way and that you will honor you will honor them lord and keep them keep them safe and keep them lord forever lord forever in the center of your holy purposes amen So thank you so much again for coming on. Um, we would uh, we would like to, as I say, we will send you a gift, but we'd like you to just let us know how best to do that. Um, all these people on on the platform have a heart to be watchmen, and so you've sewn into good clay and. Uh, we're we are very pleased and 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 humbled to be standing with you and praying for you at this amazing time in the history of God's restoration of Israel. So thank you everyone for coming on. Thank you, Pastor, for your ministry. You know, just receive just from everyone right now a blessing they're just reaching out their hands and saying bless bless this man bless yeah. this ministry bless yeah. this veil bless him. Shalom. With Amen. Shalom. TV. Yeah. and as they're all reaching out their hands yes. they, we yeah. say yes we hope, we hope you'll come on again at, at an appointed time and uh, we, uh, you know, we will keep you in our hearts in the meantime. Mm. All right. Amen. So Amen. that night, shalom. Amen. God bless. Hello, everyone. Shalom. Yeah, shalom. 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 Thank you. Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Love to your family. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, your family, Israel. Israel. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Annette. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Yes. Yes. I okay. Know what God's doing, isn't it? Oh, he's doing. Oh, yeah, he's doing amazing things. Doing. He amazing. really is. He really is. He's doing yeah. wonderful things. Yeah, more than we know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, we'll be fixing up prayer for our own nation as well, and, mm, mm, uh, because mm. we're deeply needy as a nation but mm. um, but god sees all those prayers even unspoken that are in our heart mm. so, uh, we'll we'll see you on friday and uh it's another, another blessed time god's been really blessing us with really rich anointed messages mm. and um, yeah, so we've we've got um, we've got some really special folk coming, and uh, so thank you all for your loving support, and uh, we'll see you then. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Have a good, good night. night. Yeah. Okay. Rest see you on Friday. Yes, bye-bye. I'll be in touch, Annette, if you just get ready to share five or ten minutes, some of you. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah. yeah I'm leaving. Please. Uh, I'm leaving. Okay. Have Bye. a good night. Speak to you soon. Lots of love. Night, lots of love. Okay. Give my love to Roy and Julie. Yeah. To Robert. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh,